I don't think about my face ever. My face does its own thing. And if you think about your face, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot because I don't work my face. My face is an extension of my body and my body does its thing. Hello, I'm Willem Dafoe and I'm going to be reviewing some scenes from films I've made. Okay, here we go. This is Platoon. It's a uh, scene where Elias, who is presumed dead, actually is wounded, but he's not going to make it. And he's been followed by a lot of soldiers, and they're just shooting the hell out of him. The combination of the uh, the music and how it's shot, I'm moved by it. It, it, it's, it touches me. It was crazy to shoot because I'm on the ground there's cameras in the ground, there's explosions in the ground, and there's all these extras behind me. I'm communicating on a walkie-talkie. Everybody else is up in the air. Nobody's even near me because you see one of the shots is very, very big, so they don't want anybody around. I'm detonating my own charges on my body, and I know basically where all the explosions are in the ground. So I've got to do a little dance. You're totally involved because you're pretending and you're really thinking what it would be like to have all these guys coming after you and have these other guys abandon you. But I've got all these technical obligations at the same time. But I'm a trained actor. I'm a theater actor. <laughs> I can do this. I think we did it a couple of times. That ground was hard. That movie is all scrapes and cuts. And you're happy for it because that's the stuff that gives you contact, you know? And if you don't do it, if you're worried about yourself outside of the movie, then you never quite make contact. You're fond of me, lobster. So you. Say it. This is from The Lighthouse, a movie I really enjoyed doing, directed by the great uh, Robert Eggers. It is Rob Pattinson and myself. We're lighthouse keepers. I'm the old hand, he's the new guy, and I'm a little upset with him. What? One of the beauties of Rob Eggers is he understands language. The language of this speech is so beautiful. It has a rhythm, it has a sound, it has a music. It was a pleasure to do. I don't have to say nothing. Daddy! Let Neptune strike ye dead, Winslow! Hark! Hark! The whole idea was that we weren't bonding. That's, those are the characters. But it was so cold and so brutal that we're always setting up for shots, that there was no hanging out. Rob, I liked him a great deal, and it was, it was fun to work with him, but I, we didn't know each other <laughs> because we were always either getting warm or um, doing a scene. Not that much hanging out. And, and outside of the scenes, that was our relationship. Send the souls of dead sailors to pick and claw and feed upon only to be lapped up and swallowed by the infinite waters. Sometimes you don't want to blink because when you blink, it cuts contact off for a little while. If you're really trying to drill down on someone, you don't want to lose their attention. You don't want to lose that contact. It's like electricity. You don't want to keep your hand off the switch. So you keep your eyes open. So I was very conscious that I wanted to keep my eyes open that whole speech. I don't think about my face, but I was thinking about my eyes. So I kept those eyes open and I did not want to blink. Even any scantling of your soul is Winslow no more. It has a period feel, the ratio that they chose. That has to do with how you, they want you to receive the film. But when it's black and white, of course, you can really light it in a spectacular way that can be very dramatic and very bold, but still uh, seem naturalistic. It's 
Somnatrix. That sense of yours. Norman? Norman's on sabbatical, honey. That's from uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. I was returning to a role that I had done 20 years before, uh, the Norman Osborn slash Green Goblin role. And there's a really good action sequence with Tom Holland, who's excellent partner, really physical, really great with the stunt stuff. I, I did the fighting. They also have stunt guys do it. They tend to do both. And sometimes you're working over here and they're resetting and they'll have a stunt guy do it and then you'll come over later. And So there's a lot of leapfrogging. Strong enough to have it all. Too weak to take it! Choreography, you slowly learn it, they slowly refine it, and then when you get there, you practice a lot and really shoot it quite a bit because action sequences usually depend on pretty good uh, cutting. I love doing that stuff just because it's athletic, and if you don't do it, it's really hard to connect the dramatic scenes uh, if you don't do the uh, action stuff because you got to do that stuff to get dirty to connect the, the dramatic pieces. Otherwise, you don't deserve to do the dramatic pieces. <laughs> the laugh, you don't even think about it. It's like music, you know? It's like um, making a noise, that's all. I don't think about the quality of it. Something like that is just natural. Gotta leave the ID right there with me in the office. You can't just not let me have guess what gives you the authority. Uh, what, the authority? Uh, my job title, manager. The scenes with uh, uh, this fabulous actress, Bria, who I adored working with. She was really good in the movie. I think because some people thought she was a bad mother, they didn't appreciate her enough. <laughs> the character was a bad mother, not Bria. This shot is interesting because it was a steady cam shot. Steady cam shots are normal, but it's always tricky when you're doing uh, a steady uh, cam shot and the operator's walking backwards and you're going downstairs too and you're trying not to cut. So the shot is very tricky. We had a fantastic DP. We're kind of vamping some of the time because the shot is just so long and you don't want the shot to die and we're having a fight, so we got to keep it coming. Often improvisation falls flat because you can feel the actors writing. But here's a case of we're having a pretty good fight. I didn't notice any glitches there, but we're, we're covering that long walk. So we get down to that office on time. I Tell do us how to respect people. Just because they're not your rules doesn't mean anything. There was a helicopter, like a helicopter for tourists to take helicopter rides right next to this hotel. And we had a low budget movie. We couldn't pay these guys to stop giving these rides. So we begged them, we said sometimes, hey, can, can you guys just stop while we're shooting? They're like, man, we're running a business. I'm sorry for you, but that's the way it is. So we just let it go. So it's a funky thing. You kind of wonder where it's coming from, but I think you see it in the movie. You just accept it as part of the fabric. The motel's rules, that's the way it Fuck is. Fuck you I'm looking at Tina. Hey. There's a lot of people that actually lived in this uh, motel. They participated and it's really, they taught us how to tell the story because we tried to fold into their lives. That was, the, that was the way to touch down with what we were doing, not to make it a bullshit a Hollywood film that, you know, was talking about people that we didn't know. My biggest task was not to be an actor. I had to be a hotel manager because any stink of actor that I had in this or any kind of showiness in the performance, that would not work. It would stick out like a sore thumb. I wouldn't be with the people. So here, I'm just trying to be with the people, help them out. Hey, Place my people live, okay? and you That's gotta, you gotta calm down. Like now, I've had it. I've had it. That's it. That's that. it. In selection of things like costume articles or, or props, things like that, the glasses are a little thing that I learned from a guy that I was interviewing that for research that does basically this kind of job. So those are a direct thing where I, I saw, yeah, okay, cool. That, that seems right for the character. But things like the walk, that's not particularly studied. That's just, you're trying to be that guy and the little kid in you that's pretending just wants to walk differently than you normally walk so you can feel like that guy. <laughs> They exited out the front door. 
They had no idea what they were in for. This is Boondock Saints. I play a detective that's tracking down these kind of vigilante killers. Yeah, killers. He has a special gift, a foresight, where he sees things. He's also very fond of classical music. You see that moment where he's almost directing the orchestra in this uh, heavenly chorus as all this violence is happening. I read a lot of scripts, and I think I'm pretty bad when I read action sequences. It's, it's hard to visualize. You really got to be in the place. So I couldn't imagine this. But when you get there and you start to sketch it out, it falls into place because they got to come out of the house. I got to be telling the story in the middle, and then uh, Il Duce has to be in the background. So I couldn't uh, anticipate what it would look like. And I don't really care. I don't need to do that until I get there. There was a firefight! When you've got that kind of shooting going on, you get pretty heated up. You're just doing. You're just doing. You're not, you're not thinking. You're doing. I want to present it to the heavens, you know? That's all I'm thinking. Go to Tompkins Square Park. And look for a guy named Danny C. He's usually near the basketball courts. I'm basically the only performer. There's one little sequence where there are other actors, but it's basically me because I play a, a art thief that goes to steal some paintings in a, pot, a penthouse in New York City. This is just a little improvised scene. It's a movie that doesn't do well in clips because there are very few conventional scenes. Any dialogue that's in that film is basically improvised. The, there was a script that is very strong, and there's a very strong narrative of actions, but we had to find the connecting pieces because there are events and obstacles that are very clear, but we had to connect the dots, really. Nobody here but us pigeons. Right? 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 We knew the pigeon was out there, so it's like, get out there and play a scene with this bird. That actor pigeon was pretty good. He stood still and he listened to me. He was really listening. <laughs> it was great. We inhabited the place. We shot in chronological order. If you see the movie, you can understand why. Thanks for watching. <laughs>